Um, there are a couple of uh, repeated questions were asked, especially on uh, attraction of birds to uh, on these uh, compost piles. So, uh, uh, I, what I would we have gotten some really good answers, and I would like Carl also to shed some light on that. But my two cents are that not only the the staging area where we have the compost pile, we should manage it, but also when we are bringing the mortality and bringing the feedstock, we have to make sure that any of that material is not, in the long run, going to uh, attract uh, critters and birds. Yeah, Dr. Mukhtar, I would agree completely, and that's uh, really kind of the point I was trying to make with the, the timely handling of the, the mortality. Um, my experience, and from what I hear from visiting with other folks, is predators are only going to be a problem if they know there's a meal. If they never see it and they never learn that there is a source of food there, they're just not going to congregate. So that really means receiving and processing the mortality just as quick as you possibly can. And once you've got it in the pile, make sure that you're making that it stays in the pile until it's fully processed. Uh, if you've got a situation where a cow bloats up and sheds off some uh, compost material, recover her. Uh, in smaller mortality, I've seen situations where the idea of covering the mortality was such, well, I covered the body, but it really doesn't matter if I leave any ear or a leg sticking up. That's not acceptable. That's going to be an attractant, not only for birds and predators, but also flies. Uh, so really this whole concept of out of sight, out of mind applies to people, but it also applies to predators. Thank you, Carl. Uh, I've gotten another question on define the bucking agent, and I guess since I presented that information, just very quickly, uh, what you're looking at is a any feedstock, any plant-based material that has the integrity to withstand the weight above it and would not compact to the point where you're not having this passive movement of air from the bottom to the top uh, that the, the, the oxygen as well that the, uh, the microorganisms need. And so you're looking at any material that is generally between uh, uh, about uh, half to half inch to two inch in size. There may be some bigger chunks in there, but in our case, when we use the spent uh, horse manure that had wood shavings and, and, and uh, horse manure, uh, that was an excellent uh, bulking material for that 2,000 pound cow. And there is another question on, is biochar a good uh, bulking material? And again, uh, I think what you want to use on the farm is what's available readily. And if those uh, materials such as the wood shavings or uh, wood chips or spent horse manure and other manures uh, mixed with bigger chunks are available, then that's what we're going to use. Biochars may be very, very fine and may really actually impede the movement of uh, air through the system. Uh, so you may not want to really use that as a bulking agent. Uh, I have not personally had any experience with biochar, so I'm going to just keep it to that. How do you feel about a covered and uncovered compost pile? Dean? Cover, 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 cover. <laughs> so, um, I'm not quite sure exactly what, what you're implying covered versus uncovered. I assume you're talking about a biofilter. Again, when you get talk about biofilter, that's a is going to be managing your, your nutrients, as we discussed, hopefully, um, and B, that's a case of where you're managing your predators. Uh, the more material you have on top of that animal or around that animal, or carcass, I should say, uh, the more you're going to be reducing the ability of odor spread. Thank you. And, and Carl, what if they meant by a, uh, a roof over? Now, if you're talking about a roof over or a uh, air breathable cover over that would shed water, uh, I would say uh, desirable. I think probably one of the big things we have to think about uh, is if you're talking about mortality that you're dealing with on a daily basis and you have a significant volume, what that means is you need to minimize maximize the amount of mortality that you can process for a given size of footprint. And that means you need more control, which means, hey, you really need to put a roof on this so that you can maximize your control and the efficiency that you can process things through the system.
system. Uh, if you're talking about a small cow calf operation or a small dairy operation where you just have a mortality every once in a while and speed is not as important, uh, that may be a case that a tarp over the top or a roof over the top, you really just can't justify it. Uh, and that may be a case that something off to the side that's uncovered by a roof or some air permeable cover is not, you know, not required. However, I, I, re I do want to reemphasize what Dean said. If you're talking cover, is that odor filter, that uh, organic matter on top that filters the odors, that is essential. That's needed all the time. Well, thank you very much, everybody. In the interest of time, we will conclude part one of our series of two parts. And remember, please, to tune in again on September 19th when we will talk about the same topic uh, as a part two of the series with, uh, I believe, four different presenters. Thank you very much for your time and for your attention. Appreciate it. Have a wonderful day and a great weekend.